Andor. What I saw in that trailer was pure. How can I describe it? First of all, visually it was beautiful. The suspense that it builds is sort of almost the opposite uh, from what was that? Uh, the Kenobi series, when he's describing the Jedi, he's sort of describing the Republic um, and how easily he can infiltrate because they're so full of it. They're, they're so, you know, so uh, on, on, the, on this pedestal that they don't see anything wrong with what's going on. They can't, they can't, pimp, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's easy for them to infiltrate. And the music, the actors, the performances, there's no silliness and none of the, not to say that any of these shows have been silly, but just the tone that they set in this trailer has me excited for, it had me feeling like, wow, this is Star Wars. This is Star Wars to me. Yeah. What were your thoughts on the trailer? hundred uh, percent. I'm feeling better about my prediction that Andor would be better than Kenobi. I know you said you called this for Kenobi. a long time ago. Um, I think. So things that really stood out. So number one, you mentioned it, the look, it is both very distinct. It is both very unmistakably Star Wars, but it is, it's gritty, man. It's, it's very tactile. Like the, the, the colors are toned down. There's a lot of dirt. Like we're in a lot of places we haven't seen before, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, but it just felt very real, uh, watching even like things like the Star Destroyers or the Imperial shuttle, like it wasn't as lit up. I don't know. I mean, I'd be curious. I'm sure they use the volume the same way that, you know, the Mandalorian uses it, but for some reason it just felt more tangible. Uh, the way it it see, I, I, from what I heard that they went, they did some uh, on location shots. Well, if, if so, then it shows because yeah. it, it definitely had a different lighting and different feel to it, which I thought was great. Um, the second thing is, I think this is something that we have referenced, but it's, it's, it's underrated. There's more of a sense of the unknown here and i think that's exciting because it's like yes we know cast how casting andor ultimately ends okay we get it the beach in rogue one and we know that mon mothma survives to lead the rebellion and she's still there and return the jedi and we see saul guerrera so we know we know how saul guerrera ends in rogue one mm -hmm. but the stories around that i don't know what stellan skarsgård's doing i don't know what he, his motivations are what's going to happen like so all of these missions have real stakes. Like people could die, people could survive, they could quit and it all works because it doesn't impact anything we know that's canon, but we can actually have like real storytelling. And as I keep telling people like Tony Gilroy is one of the five best living screenwriters today. And he's, he's the one who kind of pulled and wrote Road One, pululled together and wrote Rogue One, Rogue One, and he's writing and directing this. And they've got 12 episodes wow. to tell this story. Wow. And it doesn't seem like there's going to be episodes like 35 minutes or anything. It's going to be like The minutes. scale plus. looks big. Like yeah. some of the stuff that you were seeing was like, this is pretty sweeping. Um, they also have already committed to a second season, which we saw with Loki definitely helped the writing. So they've got 24 episodes that they are in on on this already. Wow. Brian, do you think these shows are leaving remnants for the future? A little. I mean, definitely for sure. I mean, I definitely think you have both the, we know we need to get you to certain places in New Hope and Rogue One. But I think, yeah, there's also going to, I mean, when you got 24 episodes, there's clearly an aspiration that there's one or two characters in this you hope become really popular and you can spin off and go in all, another direction. No question. We don't, know, we don't know who that is yet necessarily. We may not have even seen them in the trailer, but there's no question that they're hoping to do that. Yeah. Uh, and, and like, I've, I mean, like, you know, Diego Luna has been making the rounds a little bit and like he seems fired up. Like he seems like absolutely over the moon at how this went. And like how this turned out and like what they came up with for him where he was like i did rogue one and it became this 
huge thing and he was like that's great like I, I i contributed my bit to star wars and then they pitched me on this and he was like oh my god i have to i have to come back and do this so do we see darth vader in this or no uh, they, no they confirm? i would be surprised i i rogue one was you know rogue one obviously had him in there at the end there's no other lightsaber play other than that I actually will be surprised if you even see a lightsaber drawn in this series. This struck me as a very like, you know, it's a combination of like urban, um, militia, you know, spy, counterterrorism, like that that type of black yeah. ops, that type of feel to it. It, it, it. Jedi and the Force kind of get in the way of that a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um... 12 episodes always excite me. Six episodes now, if they announce, if they announce a show, I think I think we're almost done with the days of six episodes, Brian. We're kind of finding out that other than Loki, that was pretty short. That's been, that's a little too short. We haven't spent enough time in the eight to 12 range. So I let, I'd like to spend more time there and see how, it, obviously we're gonna get a chance to do 18 with Daredevil, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm some, I wonder if like, if Andor is a big hit, I wonder if you do see a few more shows move to an eight, eight to 10 episode model. You know, Mandalorian's eight, that, that's worked pretty well. What other characters do you think can show up in Andor? That we know? Yeah. Um, uh well <laughs> i mean like like fan favorites i mean like does admiral akbar count <laughs> i mean like that would make some sense yeah um i think i don't think you'll see like i don't think like donnie yen's in it like i don't think the people you saw in rogue one because they haven't met them yet so they can't really yeah, get yeah, to that yeah, point yeah. um anyone from the solo side like i mean we, everyone i don't know where they would fit but the, yeah. you know the time frame is about right yeah um there's been no talk of like a donald glover drop in from nowhere cameo but yeah. I mean, the underworld and things like that are kind of lando's alley so i don't know i'm just floating that i know nothing yeah 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 um, I, why do you I think, think I tend to think no, I tend to think that Gilroy's objective is to give you new things because he understands that the more the more familiar stuff he throws in there, the more he limits his ability to tell stories. Got it. But got I think it. part like we, things we loved about Obi-Wan, like you never you you, know, you and McGregor's still great. You know, uh uh I'm gonna mess up her name is Vivian Blair who played who played Leah. But the problem is like when those two are driving all your stories and you know exactly where those two end up, like it does yeah, make yeah, it, yeah. and Vader's the, the main villain, you, it does kind of box you in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're very limited as to what kind of story you want to tell. Um, yeah, Andor, guys, um, I think this could be possibly, um, Although not in the same genre, but certainly give it the scale and excitement as um, the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones uh, shows that, that, that I don't know if you've seen the HBO Max joint yet. Oh, yeah. This episode. Oh, yeah, you saw it? What'd you think? Uh, of, of no which? spoilers. Of, the uh, yeah. Uh, I think it's, I think it's worthy of Game of Thrones. It's not the okay. best, like it's not like it, the very best of Game of Thrones. I don't think it reaches that. I think okay. Game of Thrones fans would generally be happy. But I mean, like to your point, they moved this back, right? So Andor is now September twenty first. Um, Lord of the Rings is September second. I think House of the Dragon is the rest of it is is it coming? Is it soon or is it October? I can't remember exactly when they're dropping the whole rest of it, or it's going to mm. finish. But you know, they're all going to be on at the same time. Um, so that's going to be, that's going to be interesting to see, like, do people, I mean, we'll make time for all of it, but do, do, do people make time for that? And oh, by the way, there'll be, there'll be She-Hulk going on at the same time. <laughs> I mean, Brian, let's end it off with this, but, um, first of all, Amdo looks amazing. I think, amazing. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I wasn't believing it. 
uh, when Brian first said months ago that Andor is going to be like the best Star Wars show and is looking to be so. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that and, and I'm pretty sure many of you are as well. But She-Hulk, Brian, this show presents an opportunity to do a lot of uh, cameos of those probably superheroes that we'll never see. They could just be floating around. I don't know. But it presents itself because it just... I'm, I'm giving this show a shot. The Hulk, everything I hate about. I don't care about the Hulk one bit. Um, but I'm giving the rest of it a try. Um, it could be a sleeper. Who knows? Um, I may be just throwing it out there just to keep myself from eating so much crow after <laughs> if, if, if the show is that great. But I still don't have high hopes for it. Um, but I am going to watch it. But yeah, you, you, I'll watch you, it. I'll keep going yeah. with it. If you, if you drop off, I'll keep going with it. And keep keep you updated. I, it's going to be interesting to see who's floating around. That's from that's what I'm mostly because uh, it presents itself that opportunity because she's a lawyer. What they want her to do, whom they want her to represent, so it provides a lot of those opportunities to see what what she can do there. Um, but all the, the 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 cameos that we're hearing about the thing possibly showing up, um, definitely already they gave us the the cameo with Daredevil. So I think that's sort of the 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 that's the type of show that we're gonna have um, having the cameos and those awkward moments that the She Hulk is gonna have. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Andor, and uh, are you looking forward to seeing the She Hulk? Um, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nigeria Report.